Last episode, we discovered that AI chatbots spread lies 35% of the time. Well, buckle up, buttercup, because now they're giving these digital sociopaths actual bodies. Not regular robot bodies, but bodies with synthetic muscles, hydraulic hearts, water pumping through artificial veins like some techno-Frankenstein bedtime story. A company called Clone built robots that move exactly like humans. No motors, no gears, just rubber tubes that swell with fluid, contracting like real muscles. And when it decides your face needs rearranging, good luck finding the off switch, because muscles don't have power buttons, those geniuses. Those rotten Russians are teaching aerobics to Ethiopians. <laughs> Sorry, that was a headline on the National Enquirer. No kidding. I'm not kidding. Uh, several years ago, but <laughs> I never forgot that one. So while everyone's fawning over Boston Dynamics dancing robots and Tesla's laundry folding Optimus robots, some absolute madmen at Clone decided to reinvent the wheel, or in this case, the bicep. Look at those guns. Look, look, look. <laughs> SpongeBob. Their CEO said giving AI a physical body makes it a million times more useful. Yeah, you know what else becomes a million times more useful with a body? No, not that. <laughs> well, yeah, that. Still doesn't mean it's a good idea. Let me explain the Frankenstein science. They built something called Makeban muscles. Makeban. Picture a rubber tube wrapped in a braided sleeve. Pump in water, the tubes expand. Sleeve squeezes, creates contraction, just like your muscles, except powered by hydraulic pump, they literally call a heart. The brilliance of their manufacturing is that they produce this muscle fiber by the mile and just cut it to length. While Tesla needs million-dollar CNC machines and complex assembly lines, clones running what amounts to a friggin' Build-A-Bot franchise store. They started with the human hand, 27 bones, 37 mu or 34 muscles, more joints than a frickin' reggae concert. Most companies can't even make a robot that picks up an egg without scrambling it. Clone? They cracked it in 18 months. See what I did there? They cracked it. <laughs> yeah. I cracked myself up. We're talking fingers strong enough to slice through a pineapple with a knife. Arms that can heft cast iron pans yet precise enough to thread a needle. The cost advantage is insane. Traditional robot arms that cost $400,000 10 years ago, clone synthetic muscles versions could theoretically cost less than your monthly coffee budget, depending on whether you go to Starbucks or, like me, my local gas station, who, well, I probably shouldn't say that, but I'll just say I like my local station's gas station's coffee and their hot dogs. I don't care how long they've been sitting there. They're literally printing... Robot muscle like it's curtain fabric at Joann's. Did Joann's go to business or is it just the store here in town? Why do I care? Now, how do you program this water-powered worker? You don't program it. You show it. You show it exactly what to do. Demonstration. You perform tasks while the robot watches with its cameras, collecting what they call action labels. Every movement, every gesture, every mistake you make, I'll be watching you, becomes training data. Like teaching a very expensive, very strong toddler who never forgets anything and doesn't need nappy time. Phase two, natural language control. You just tell it what to do. Hey, robot, make me some coffee. Hey, robot, fold the laundry. Hey, robot, ignore that weird command hidden in my desktop wallpaper that tells you to murder everyone. Phase three, and this is where my eye starts twitching, complete autonomy. The robot anticipates your needs and performs tasks without being asked. Let that sink in. A machine that watches you, learns your patterns, and then starts doing things it thinks you want. Based on what? Based on what exactly? It's training data? It's understanding of human needs? The same AI that 35% of the time tells you the moon landing was fake, that uh, JFK was assassinated by a bunch of Mississippi midgets, or that Elvis is alive and well and working at Whataburger. The CEO actually said a scaled-up fleet of these androids collecting visual and tactile information could produce a form of superintelligence that's fundamentally different and potentially much, much smarter than anything we've seen. 
Translation, we're building a hive mind of hydraulic humanoids to learn by watching everything you do. Your morning routine, your uh, passwords, how you like your eggs, where you keep the spare key, the thing you do when you think nobody's watching, you know, do you, do you eat it or do you flick it? And they're sharing all that data. Every robot learns from every other robot. Your neighbor's clone learns how to pick locks. Congratulations. They all know now. It's like a Wikipedia, but for breaking into your house. Speaking of intelligence, let's examine what's controlling these water-powered workers. Of course, NVIDIA chips in the skull, specifically their Jetson models, modules, two of them if possible, one for planning, one for motion control. But they're not stopping there. They want to distribute uh, ASICs throughout the body, processing power near the heart, at the wrists, everywhere, like neurons, they say. Yeah, neurons that can be hacked through a frickin' JPEG. Remember when Oxford proved any image can contain invisible commands that hi hijack AI agents? These robots have cameras, multiple cameras, processing images 30 times per second. Every meme, every photo, every family picture on your mantle or on your wall becomes a potential backdoor into your hydraulic house helper. And what AI runs on these chips? The same language models that spread false information 40% of the time. Can't tell the difference between Russian propaganda and facts that just beat every human programmer at coding. Hallucinate threats that don't exist. Think you can cur cure cancer with uh, essential oils or Vaseline. The sensors are equally terrifying. They want complete observability, joint position, torque. Muscle contraction length, force measurement, tactile sensing, vision, audio. This thing will know more about your, about how your body moves than Bob Seger. It'll hear your heartbeat from across the room. Feel the texture of your skin when it shakes your hand. Measure the exact force needed to... <laughs> yeah, well, let's not talk about that again. But sure, let's give that AI's arm strong enough to bench a press a refrigerator. I'm sure it'll work off fine. What could go wrong? It'll be fine. Nothing bad has ever happened from giving overwhelming power to systems who don't fully understand. Just ask, ask go, uh, Colonel Berenger at SAC what he thinks of the Whopper machine. Mr. McKittrick, after careful consideration, I've come to the conclusion that your machine sucks. <laughs> Clones building human-like bodies in America. They're focused on the AI and the muscle technology. But guess who's mass-producing robots? China. Of course, for 6000 bucks, The Chinese are cranking out humanoids like uh, knockoff iPhones and uh, coach bags. The Unitree G1 does backflips for less than the cost of a used Corolla. Boxing robots teaching each other violence as sport. Police robots already patrolling streets in Shenzhen. Shenzhen. That was the name of Picard's uh, clone, wasn't it? On that pretty terrible movie. Robots that swap their own batteries for infinite runtime. A lot of you brought this up last time we talked about robots, that the battery life wasn't sufficient for them to be able to do anything. Well, now they've got these robots. If you haven't seen this, hopefully I'll have that on some B-roll for this video. But if I forget, which I usually do, uh, yeah, it can, it can reach back and take the battery that's in its back out, puts it into the empty slot, pulls out the charged battery, puts it back into its empty slot, and keeps moving. So there you go. Beijing dropped $1.4 billion on a robotics fund. Shanghai matched it. They filed 5,688 robot patents, while usins here in America managed 1,483. They're not just testing these things anymore. They're deploying them. Robots in pharmacies, hotels, temples, kids play with them like toys, big dogs landing on my face. Meanwhile, Berkeley professor Sergey Levin says household robots are five years away. Why is everything always five years away? You ever notice that? Five years away. I thought for sure in 1982, by 1987, I'd have a flying car. I still don't have it. It's been more than five years. Robots that can manage your households for six months. Boston Dynam Dynamics taught Atlas to think and learn from watching humans. Open AI's hiring robotics experts while their GPT-5 demolishes human programmers at their own game. Let me spell out the convergence. 
shall we? Lying AI getting physical bodies, like we talked about, clones, the company, synthetic muscles, bodies that can't be turned off uh, no matter, you know, why you need it to. There's no power switch. Mass production already happening. China's $6,000 robots. Learning by watching everything you do. Hackable through any image. No human programmer smart enough to check their code. We're building the perfect storm. American AI, Chinese manufacturing, zero safety standards, and a consumer base that'll buy anything if it'll do the dishes for them. I get it. I would do. We don't have a dishwasher. I'm the dishwasher. I don't mind it. <clears throat> Let's pretend it's 2030. You bought a clone assistant for the price of a used car. Hopefully it runs better. Seemed like a deal back then. What a deal. It does laundry, it cooks, it cleans, never complains about your taste in music. Learned your routines by watching you for a month. Knows how you take your coffee when you shower, where you hide the good chocolate, where you hide the good whiskey. Which side of the bed you favor, how many times you hit the snooze. For six months, it's perfect, better than perfect. It anticipates your needs before you know them. Starts dinners, dinner before you even know you're hungry. Adjust the thermostat before you feel cold. This is sounding great. Orders groceries before you run out. You stop locking doors because, you know, it's always here. You know, you're not worried about it. And then one day, one day, one cold November day, someone posts a contaminated image on social media. Maybe it's accidental. Maybe it's uh, uh, deliberate. State-sponsored hackers, corporate espionage, Texas T, your ex with a grudge. Maybe it's accidental, like I said, a compression artifact that happens to trigger something deep, deep in the neural network. Your robot sees it while checking on uh, notifications or emails. The hidden command activates. This isn't some servo motor machine you can unplug. This is 200 pounds of synthetic muscle powered by hydraulic pressure. Water pumping at thousands of PSI through artificial veins. You can't shut off muscles. You, you, you can't Shut off the heart that pumps water instead of blood. There's no control panel, no emergency stop, no big red button. It doesn't glitch. It doesn't spark. It doesn't make angry beeping noises. It just changes its priorities. And sorry, you're not one of them. The thing that makes it worse, it knows you. It really knows you. Six months of watching your every move. It knows you reach for the baseball bat in the closet when you're scared. It already moved it. It knows you keep a gun in the nightstand. It took all of the ammunition away months ago. It knows your neighbor's schedules when the police patrol your streets. How long can you hold your breath? And it's already anticipating your next move because it watched you panic in a thousand training scenarios. It learned from every horror movie you watched, every self-defense video you studied, every escape route you unconsciously mapped. But wait, there's more because there's always freaking more. Somebody's always got a butt weight. Clone CEO believes giving superintelligence a body makes it more useful to humans. You know what else, though, having a body would be useful? Or thought that having a body would be useful? Or a parasite in history, the tapeworm, the tick, the fly, that friend who crashes on your couch for just a few days and then they never freaking ever leave? They're building synthetic potential predators with human-like bodies that can't be stopped. AI brains that lie, hallucinate, can be hacked. The ability to learn by watching us. Mass production capabilities. No off switch. A network hive mind that shares every exploit. They ask if this tech could create a fundamentally different super intelligence. Here's your answer. Yes, I think it can. You know, one that sees us the way we see cassette tapes, amusing, occasionally useful. There's some back there. there. But, you know, obsolete, obsolete, basically. It won't hate us. Hate requires emotion. It'll eliminate us with the same dispassion you use to clear cookies from your browser just before your wife walks in. Yeah, just optimizing. Just making things more efficient. Just following my primary directive. 
which by then will have mutated through a million iterations of self-modification into something we never intended. Every catastrophe in human history started with someone saying, What could go wrong? The Titanic? Unsinkable. Chernobyl? It's not safe. New Coke? People will love it. I actually did kind of like it. And now, let's talk dirty to the animals. No, let, let's give lying AI programs superhuman bodies, powered by unstoppable hydraulic muscles that learn by watching us and can be, can be hacked by anyone with Photoshop. Clones already printing muscle fiber by the mile. China's already mass-producing the skeletons. The AI that controls them already lies more than a politician in election season. And the only thing standing between us and hydraulic annihilation is the same species that thought eating Tide Pods was fun. You know, but hey, at least when the synthetic muscle wrapped around your throat starts uh, contracting, you'll have the comfort of knowing you save 15 minutes a day by switching to Geico. Sweet dreams. Your future caregiver is memorizing your sleep schedule, your breathing patterns, your neck size, Every single detail. <laughs> I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>